Good evening. We're ready to get started. We're starting. We're going to be learning the final Vlad Maseches Ksulos Dav Kufyud Beis. We're starting about two thirds of the way down, four lines into the wide, lo- widest lines on Kufyud Aleph and Beis. We do have a lot of ground to cover. Beautiful Gemaras about Eretz Yisrael, about the Peros of Eretz Yisrael, which is what we're starting with today. A couple of challenging Gemaras, not in the reading sense, but uh, scary Gemaras about Igvus uh, of the Mishicha Bechulei. Let's get to the end of the parak. Tanya, four lines into the widest lines, two thirds of the way down. Kufi Dalif from the base. Zamer of Yosi, Maisa b'Shichin. There was a story in the city of Shichin. Be'echad she'iniach lo Aviv shlosha bade chardal, whose father had left him three stalks of chardal of mustard. The nifshach echad mehen. One of the three fell off, so he had one stalk of chardal of mustard. V'nim subo tisha kaben chardal, a massive amount of mustard. Sees ve'etz of sichach obo sukas yotren, and he was able to use the wood from this one branch to make a sukas yotren to cover over uh, a particular sukkah with schach, just massive amounts of, uh, of vegetation. Amr of Shimon ben Tachlifa, kelach shel kruv hiniach lo'alanu abba. My father left one stalk of cabbage. V'ainu olam v'yordim bo besulam. We used to use a ladder to, to get to the top of it. So like not abnormal. It's like the pictures of Israel where they carry the cluster of grapes on a stick. You know, so that's really what we're talking about here. <clears throat> what is the Pasuk min v'dam anav tishtechem p'chamar? The blood of a grape will be will be drunk with wine or will, will be wine. Amar, lo ka'olam azeh ha'olam The next world and this world are not the same. Ha'olam azeh, when it comes to this world, yesh bo tzar liv tzor v'lidro. We have the challenges of harvesting. We have the challenges of, of crushing to get the liquids out. But in the next world, things are going to be a little bit different. Maybe Anova Achas Bikaron. They're going to bring one single grape Bikaron in a wagon or Bisfina or in a boat. Umanicha So he'll take that one little uh, one little grape and put it in the corner of his house. And it will be like he effectively has a keg of wine. There's so much wine that's being generated by even one grape. The eights of Masikin Tachas Hatavshil, and you can use the the uh, whatever that's called, the uh, the branches that connect the grapes to one another. I'm sure it has a real name. I don't know what it is. And that's going to be used. Tachas atav shall be used for for fuel. Vein lecha kol anava vanava shein bo shloshim garbe yayin. Just massive numbers uh, that uh, they we you wouldn't even have any grapes that wouldn't produce thirty barrels of wine. Shenemar v'dam anav tishte chemer that it's going to be one grape. Anav in the singular will generate a lot of wine. Al tikri chamar el chomer. Chomer is a reference to a halachic shear of 30 sa, massive amounts of liquid. Again, this is mostly hyperbolic in the volumes. It's just showing you that the fruits were abnormally large, but it wasn't hyperbolic fully. There was actually some truth that these fruits were not normal, as we'll see in some practical stories soon. What does it mean when the Pasuk says, uh, speaks about a gefen of the city? There wasn't any uh, type of vineyards that didn't need a city of people to do the vitzira, to do the harvesting. What does the Pasuk mean? What does the Pasuk mean? Ein lecha kol ilan srak. An ilan srak is a tree that's not fruit bearing. And afal pikein, even though it wasn't fruit bearing, there were no trees in Eretz Yisrael. Shev Eretz Yisrael she'en moti masuish de asonos. Every donkey would be two, two donkeys laden with with fruits from even non fruit bearing trees. Nisim vini floats. You're talking about a, a maple tree and it's growing apples and oranges. Not normal. Fruits were growing. Not normal. That's why I wonder sometimes some of the fruits you see in Julia, you're like that didn't grow on a tree. You know, those like uh, massive footballs that you know what I'm talking about? The ones by Rosh Hashanah? I don't even know what they are. I've never seen them before. Uh, they're huge. They're like pumpkin size. They're really large. Anyway, never seen them before. You can make a, but it's a vegetable. Make a I don't know. The Shema Tomar Ein Bo Yain. Maybe you'll say, okay, but these non fruit bearing trees, they'll never have wine. Not true, Talmud Lomar. The Pasuk says, Ki beis levusho. Tomar eno adom. Maybe you'll say that the wine is not red. Not true. Tamal Omer v'dam anav tishtech emer. The same Pasuk v'dam. Dam is red. Here, by the way, we see a preference for red wine over white wine. So a Gemara like this has a very subtle a subtle influence on our minhagim by the Dalek Kosos. I can't drink red wine, so I'm out of the mix. But for anyone who can drink red wine over white wine, it is preferred to drink red wine. So what I would do is I'm restricted just up from migraines. I use white wine. And I put a splash of uh, something red in it just to make it. A, they don't uh, the percentages, the concentration. It doesn't have to be red, red. So I do. I do the best I can. There are Shilas and Poskim. What if your preference is white wine over red wine by Pesach? Is that considered? Is your preference enough to override the Gemara's hint that red is better? So Talmud Lomar that the blood is red. Maybe we'll say that the fruits. The wines that grow from these non-fruit bearing trees won't be satisfying. Tamal Lomar, that's not true. So, so that it will be appealing. Shema Tamar ain't both time. It won't be, it won't taste good. Tamal Lomar, Chachlili and Naimi Yain. And what does the word Chachlili mean? 
any palate that tastes. Omar, li, li, pass it to me. Can you give me a little bit more? Pour me another cup. So the word chachlili is a conjunction of words speaking about the chech and my desire to, to eat. Maybe it's true that it's only good for the young generation with the unsophisticated palate. But for the elders, not so much. They want the older, drier wines. They don't want the, as my father often says, ah, the grapes from the fine year of 2022. You know, so that's for the young and the unsophisticated. But when you're a connoisseur, so then you're looking for for old grapes. You're looking for the old stuff. It costs a lot more money. Tom Lomar, how do we know that even the elders will like this kind of wine? It says the Gemara, Uleven she, Uleven she, what? Uleven Shinai Mechalav. I'll take Uleven Shinai Uleven Shanim. That even for someone who is of age, that they'll still enjoy this wine. Okay, now granted, that's all allegorical, that's all homiletical, but says the Gemara, 15 lines from the bottom of Kufiud Aleph Amid Beis, Pasht hit the Krub and Mike, see what's going on really in this Pasuk, says the Gemara, Kiyasar of Dimi Amar. Amar Knesset Yisrael Ifni HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Knesset Yisrael says to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ribbon HaShololam, Rimoz Be'enecha, can you at least hint to us with your eyes, that uh, that you care about us. Debasim mechamra. That's more flavorful than wine. Do you hear this? This is like the musr of like parenting of today. You know, like the passive aggressive stare. You've said nothing, but you've, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. So it's very very easy to to do this. There's a there's an awful video. Awful video. You have to watch it because of how how powerful it is. A mother plays with a child sitting, a one and a half year old child sitting there. She's face to face. Googling, matching all the sounds of the kids smiling. And then the video on the dime, she just flat face, no reaction. And the child over the course of the next 60 seconds gets more and more violent. It's it's wild to watch. Have you, have you anybody seen this? It's wild to watch. Same person. And in a very short span of time, the child begins to have all these negative reactions. They want to catch attention. So they start throwing food and they start freaking out and screaming. It's unbelievable. Just the power of some of some good eye communication, making people feel loved just by looking at them. So the Gemara says, Can you at least just look upon us graciously so that we can see that you care about us? That's basim mechamra. That's even better than wine. Show us your teeth. Smile. Let us know that you care about us. As we saw yesterday, the basim mechalva. That's even more flavorful than milk. So there's the physical needs and there are the, the expressions of ourselves to others. And that's what we ask a Kodesh Baruch Hu for. And in fact, says the Gemara, It's better to show the white of your teeth to your friends than it is to give them milk. What? <laughs> Fantastic. Dr. Stein, putting it on the front of the building right now. You're building right now. In Hebrew, Ksuvos Kefiral from a base. That's Givaldic. That's awesome. And P.S. You should drink low sugar milk just so your teeth don't decay. Oh, fantastic. Any other professions want to jump in? Just let me know. It doesn't work for my profession. So <laughs> and the Gemara says it's better that way uh, to do that. Shenemar Ulaven Shinai Mechalav. And of course, the Gemara is referencing a very, very crucial fundamental idea, which is to take care of the emotional well being of people. Even more, even as a greater priority than the physical well-being, this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You need to first feel safe to be safe. Okay, it says the Gemara Al Tikri Levan Shinai Melo Libun Shinai play on words that it is the whitening of the teeth. Rebchia Bar Abba, Rebchia, that's not true. Rebchia Bar Ada Mikri Dardiki Derish Lakish Haba. Rebchia Bar Bar Ada was the Rebbe. He was the Mikri Dardiki, the one who read to the children of Rish Lakish's kids. Which is interesting because I would have thought Rish Lakish would have homeschooled. But here the Gemara says, note that he uh, sent his kids to Cheder, and the Rabbi was Ruchia Bar Ad. Says the Gemara, if Gartzlasa Yomi Asa, for three days the Rabbi was missing, took a little bit of a, of a staycation. Kiyasa, when he showed back, Amar Lei, Amai If Garta, where did you where did you go? Where were you? Why did you ditch for the last three days? Amar Lei, my father left me one thing in the field. On the first day, I harvested Gimel Meos Eshkolos, 300 clusters of grapes. Eshkol Grab. Every cluster was a barrel. Yom Sheni, I harvested the same number of clusters, but Sarti Gimel Meos Eshkolos, same number of grapes, but they were a little bit less uh, potent. Shte Eshkolos Grab. It took two clusters in order to generate a grab, to generate a barrel. And Yom Shlishi, but Sarti Mena Gimel Meos Eshkolos. Of course, the third day he harvested again, still another three. 300 uh, clusters and says the Gemara, Shalosh Eshkolosh Legrav, the power of the grapes. He, kept, he picked the best ones on day one and the next best ones on day two. So we know that you, whenever you go shopping in the store, 
or whenever you're eating out of a bag and there's like blueberries, by the end, the blueberries that are left are the nebuch blueberries that you carefully <laughs> selected, your brain selected over the course. Take the fattest ones first, the firm ones. By the time you're done, the nasty, moldy, smushy ones on the bottom. Okay, same thing here. He's picking the great clusters. The first cluster is the grapes. Every cluster was a barrel. The second round, every every two clusters was a barrel. And the third round, every three clusters was a barrel. Behiv karti yoser He said, I had to give up half of the clusters. <laughs> which means that this cluster had more than 1,800, uh, this field had more than 1,800 clusters of grapes. Omar Le, the Rebbe, Reish Lakish says back in, Ilav Garta, had you not ditched yeshiva, you would have made even more money. Haba Abda This is not a reason to leave yeshiva. It's not time to go collect dividends from the bank. Stay at your job. This is what your achraya says. Rami Bar go four lines from the bottom. Mikva Le Brak. He went to Bnei Brak. Chazanhu. He saw that there were these Ezim, these goats <coughs> that were eating underneath a Te'ena tree. And the honey, date honey, was dripping from the trees. And at the same time, the Chal Vataif Minahu and the goats were dripping milk from their udders. And says the Gemara, and they were mixing together the honey and the milk. Says the Gemara, this is a kim of the Pasuk Omar, Hainus of Aschalavudvash. This, the Gemara Maseches Bechora says, is the reason we're allowed to drink milk. Milk, how are we allowed to drink milk? Not allowed to drink milk. Milk is from an animal that's you're not allowed to eat. It's Aver Minachai. If you're not allowed to eat the animal, how are you allowed to drink a product of the animal? And the Gemara Maseches Bechora quotes this Pasuk and says, don't worry. Eretz Zavas Chalav Udvash. Because the Pasuk says Chalav, the Gemara says that you can't be Meshabech Eretz Yisrael B'midi Delo Chazi. You're not allowed to praise Eretz Yisrael with Chalav if the Chalav is not kosher. The Haraya Chalav must be kosher. But otherwise, it's not kosher. So this Shiloh comes up. Are you allowed to give a Goy milk? The heter that we have is only for a Yid. If you have a non-Jew in your house, can you offer them a cup of milk? These Shilohs are brought in post game about this and about eggs and about other things that we do eat because we have Heterim to eat. But the heterim don't apply to a goy. A goy cannot eat aver minachai. So some of the poskim say milk is not an aver, but but an egg is an aver. So there are poskim lemaisa who hold this way that you're not allowed to give an egg to a goy. It is lifne iver lo sitein michshol because we are the only ones who have a heter to eat an egg. They are not allowed. I asked this question to Rav Zalman Nechemya Goldberg directly and her personal shechter. Rav Zalman Nechemya Goldberg said, ah, no big deal. Her personal shechter said, it's taka problem. <laughs> and you should be careful not to let your let your uh, helpers at home who are not jo- Jewish uh, scramble eggs in your home and eat them because they may not be allowed to eat them. All based on this puzzle. It's, it's not, that's not from here. That's another, that's another head. That's true. But it's the same, the, this, the conversation, this was one of the starting points because it's kola yote minatame tame. Okay, to be continued. Three lines from the bottom. Mamra Yaakov ben Dustai milud leono shlosha milin. Milud leono shlosha milin. That it's three meal from one city to the next. Pamachas kidamti beneshef. I woke up early in the morning. Balachti ad karsuli. I was walking up to my ankles, in, uh, in the honey of dates, just a tremendous amount of surplus of honey. I saw the overflowing milk and honey of Tzipori. Massive piece of property, 16 million by 16 million. Uh, a meal is approximately a mile, give or take. It's a little bit larger, actually. So just imagine a 16-mile square piece of property that is just overflowing with honey. Again, some degree of hyperbole, you have to figure out, <coughs> you don't have to figure out, <laughs> but the Gemara is trying, trying to make a point here. <laughs> I saw as well the uh, the beauty of the milk and flowing honey. It says the Gemara as we turn to the last blood in Maseches Ksubis Vahavya, Kimi Be Mirsi Ad Akra de Tulbanki. This is between two locations, a pretty big distance of Kafbe's Parsi. Urka. <laughs> it was 22 parsa long, upusya shisa parse, and it was six um, six parse wide. So 22 by six parse wide. All of the all of the gematria. Okay, if you want to go down the rabbit hole, you can find a whole bunch of things going on here. Okay, Rabbi Chalbo, Rabbi Avira, Rabbi Yosi Barchani, the Iklu Lahu Asra. These rabbanim they went to a particular place. Aisu Kamayu Afarsika to have a kilfus kvarhino. They found a peach. And the peach was the size of the pan in Kvarhino. We don't know. We need a point of reference, please. You know, says the Gemara, Vilfis Kvarhino Kamahave, Hey Sa'in. It was a massive, a massive container that held five sa. Yeah. A minimum mikvah holds 40 sa. Our mikvahs hold way more than 40 sa, but uh, Lamaisa, it's uh, quite a bit. 
achlu shlish, they ate a third of the peach. The hifkiru shlish, they gave up a third of it. The nasnu lifne behemton shlish. And when they were done giving away a third, they fed their animals a third. So this peach was massive. The next year, Lashana, six, seven lines down, Kufyud Bez Ahmed Aleph. The next year, Ikla Rebbe Lazar, Lahasam Ba'isu the Kame. The next year, Rebbe Lazar went there and he also took a peach and it, it, the sizes had drastically shrunk. Last year's peach, they could only eat a third. This time, Naktu Biyode, he was able to hold it in his hand. Now, let's be clear. We're not talking about peaches that we sell in Jewel. The peaches that we're talking about in the Gemara were massive. It was probably the size of a watermelon, whereas the days before was the size of five watermelons. So there was already a Yerida in the size from one year to the next. The fruits have become salty. Uh, they've basically then they've basically uh, degraded because of the ras yoshveba because of the evil that's taking place there meaning when we do our part then a kodesh baruch Hu gives us a miraculous world the world is already miraculous but even in a, in a nigla fashion we'll see things that are not normal the the functioning of the base of there were 10 nisim every day because we were on the next level the, the Svarim write this, that, that in the times of the first base of Mikdash, it was impossible, it was impossible to be a heretic. The Tzedukim were only in the second base of Mikdash. They were not in the first base of Mikdash. Akkadosh Baruch Hu was everywhere. It was impossible to not see Akkadosh Baruch Hu in the Mikdash Rishon. Mikdash Sheni already was a Yurida. The Tzedukim interceded and people started having seen Aschinam. They thought that we weren't one. What kind of craziness. Of course we're one. <laughs> And the Mikdash Rishon, that was Pashat. The Averas that they did were external Averas of Shvichus Damim and Gile Ras and Avodah Zara. And those are terrible Averas. But they weren't internal to the Yid that you don't believe you're part of Klal Yisrael. That only existed in the times of the second base of Mikdash. So we have to get our act together. We are. You read us Adora, should be you read us Adora. So I hope we're on the upswing now that we actually all like each other. Okay, says the Gemara, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi Ikla Lagavla. He went to this particular place. And Chazan hu lehan hu ketufe. He saw these clusters of grapes to have kaime ki igli. It actually looked like an animal, looked like an eagle, a baby calf. <laughs> Massive. You know, baby calf, they're not small. They're, I mean... Relative to the mothers, they're small, but they're they're not small animals. Omar Agalim Benagifanim. Someone should go stop the animals. They're roaming among the vineyards. He didn't know what it was. He thought it was an eagle, a baby calf. <laughs> Says the Gemara, Amru Lek Tufe Ninhu. No, those are the clusters of grapes. Eretz Yisrael has massive grapes. Omar Eretz Eretz. He says he says to the ground. The land, the land, what are you producing? You're putting out too much fruit. Why do you say that? Who are you giving all this fruit to? Some Gemaras have La'aravim. You have La'aravim? I figured the Oz Hadar changed it. Rabbi Reznik Shir said La'aravim. He's using an old Gemara, apparently. Uh, but the newer Oz Hadar changed the language. You're giving fruit to the people who are benefiting from our Averas. Lashana, the next year, Ikla Ribchil Hasam, he went to the same city of Gavla, Chazanhu Dahavu Kaime Ki'ize. And then he saw that the clusters of grapes were no longer the size of a baby calf, but like a goat, a smaller animal. That's the difference in Behema Gasa and Behema Daka. Behema Daka is much smaller. So he saw that it looked like a goat. Omar, Izim Bein Agafanim, he said, hey, there's some Izim, there's some goats running around the vineyard. Someone should go capture them. Omar, Lezil, you get out of here. The last time we had this conversation, the animals were the animal comparisons were bigger, which means that I don't want you to talk about my field anymore. Get out of my field. Lo Tavi Lon. I don't want you here anymore. You're going to make things uh, worse. Taner Rabbanon at the two dots, four lines into the wide lines. Kuf Yud Beis and Madalaf. The Gemara says, Taner Rabbanon beBirchosei Hashel Eretz Yisrael with the blessings of Eretz Yisrael in a year where things were mevorach. Beis Sa, if you had one Beis Sa of grain, Ose Chameshes Ribo Kuren. Chameshes Ribo. Let's do the math. Five ten thousands, fifty thousand units of food from a Beis Sa. A Beis Sa is a field, and a Beis Sa is not a small field, but fifty thousand is a ridiculous number. <laughs> the Gemara kind of sort of does some math. The Gemara says, "Bishivasa shall tzoan." When the city of Tzoan was settled, Tzoan was in Mitzrayim. Beisa osa shivim koren. It made seventy. The Tanya, the Brisa writes, "Some Reb Merni Reisi bebikas beishan beisa osa shivim koren." Vein lechamul b'chol eretz yosam eretz Mitzrayim. Other than eretz Yisrael, Mitzrayim was one of the best of the land. Shneimar kigan Hashem keretz Mitzrayim. So Mitzrayim was great. So on was the best land within Mitzrayim. Dad, you got a you got a cough drop on you? Thanks. Ah, like eight weeks. Ago. Never stops the whole dad thing, you know. Thank you. So says the Gemara that Soan was the best of all of the properties in 
uh, in Mitzrayim, Dehabu Marbi Bamalche, there were a lot of kings there, Dechsiv Kihayu Bet Soan, Sarab, there were a lot of officers who lived in Soan, who lived in that city. Bein Lechatroshim, there were no rocky properties, Bechol Eretz Yisrael Yosem Rechevron, that we know, Rechevron is a very, very rocky property. Dehabu Kavre Bashichbe, that's where people were buried. Dehafilu Hachi, and even though Soan was the best of the fertile lands, and even though Hebron was rocky, it was still <laughs> better than Soan. Hebron Mivuna was more fertile. Al Echad Mishiva but so on. It had a seven X factor of fertile ground, even though it was rocky more than Soan. Hebron had had all the blessings. Hebron Sheva Shanim Div Nisalif Nei Soan Mitzrayim. That it was built seven years before Soan Mitzrayim. The Gemara says Niv seems to be built, but that's not a good language to use here because. We have some historical issues here with a pasuk. My nivnasa halfway down kufyud beis amad aleph. What does it mean nivnasa that Hebron was built seven years before Tzoa and Mitzrayim? Remember, Hebron was in the land of Canaan, and Canaan and Mitzrayim were brothers. And says the Gemara ilema nivnasa mamish efshar adam bone bais levno kot and kodim shivno levno gadol. How can you say that Hebron, which was from the brother of Canaan, from the land of Canaan, that it was built seven years before Mitzoan, Shene Emar? After all, what does it say? Vnei Cham, who were the children of Cham? Kush u Mitzrayim ufutu Canaan. It should be that Hebron, which is part of Canaan, wasn't built before. That doesn't make sense before it's so on. Ella says the Gemara, you're right. Shemivune, it doesn't mean building. In this case, it means fertile. Strange language for fertile. This requires a study of some etymology. It's a very weird word for fertile, but it says the Gemara, Ella Shemivune, al Achas, Mishiva, but so on. So it's more fertile seven times over. And we said, Vahani, me, the What? What? Mm -hmm. In order to know that, you'd have to do Shnai Mikra Yeah, I trust you. Yeah. Clearly, I haven't looked at it yet. It says the Gemara behind me, the that that's true of the rocky property of Alo Betrashim, Chamesh Mea, that in a land of Eretz Yisrael, forget Hebron. If you have a land of Eretz Yisrael that isn't rocky in Eretz Yisrael, it's going to be Chamesh, Chamesh Mea, which is 500. The Hani Mili Shalob Bevir Chosea, that's without the Brachos of Hashem, of Bevir Chosea, see by Israel Yitzchak Be'er Tahi, and the Pasta Gans Mea Sha'arim. So you have 500 times 100 is 50,000. And that's what the Gemara says. It's a real math equation that leads us to this conclusion that a base saw yields 50,000 units of product. Tanya, the Brisa writes, Amar of Yossi saw be Yehuda. One son, Yehuda, would generate as follows. Haisa Osa, Chamesh son, would make five saw of different kinds of things. Saw Kemach, flour, it would make saw solas, fine flour, saw subin, which is grain. Saw Morsan is another type of grain. With saw Kiburia, which... Uh, I think uh, the R scroll calls it cabrium or something. Yeah. What? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, so the Meforshim explained that this is one of the uh, outcomes of the process of grinding up wheat. It's one of the products that comes out. It's an inferior type of quality of uh, property that the R scroll at the bottom of the footnote says that we're talking about here. But these are these were things that were usable for certain things. Fine. So that's what the Gemara says. Um, Right. And if you read the next sentence, it says it has an inferior. Oh, that was the previous yeah. sentence. Yeah. Amar le'ahu tzduki le This This tzduki said to Reb Chanina, Yo'a mashpechisu ba ve'arachon. It is wonderful that you praise your land the way that you do. Why? Because this tzduki says, my father gave me one besa. What did I get from it? Mimena moshach, I got oil. Mimena chamar, I got wine. Mimena ibor, I got... Uh, I got grain. Me mena kitneos. I got legumes. Me mena roos uh, roos miknasi. My animals were able to graze. Amar le hahu bar amuro levar ara di Yisrael. Hi taalta. This palm tree also unique. We're used to the word dekel. So this must have been been a, the phrase of the day. This must have been the way that they spoke about a palm tree. The kaima aguda di Ardana, which is on the the bank of the Jordan. Kama. I've seen a couple of languages here. Kama gazrisu. Do you have gazrisu? Some yeah, have different words. Yeah, right. Some have gadrisu. So different words. But basically, how much did, were you able to harvest? How much were you able to harvest from this tree? So he says, Amalei shisin kuri. I was able to harvest 60 kur. Amalei akati lo elo ailisuba. You haven't even gone into the land yet. And achriv tua, you've already destroyed it. You've only gotten 60 kur out of one tree. After all, onon, we who took care of these trees, may have a esrin kuri, have a gazrin and mina. We got double the produce from this tree. 
says the Gemara, Amar no, I was only talking about the side I was looking at. That was just the side that I had access to. But you're right, there was an equal amount on the other side, 120. We haven't ruined the land yet. So that's what the Gemara says. Amar Rav Chiza, my dechsi, what does the Pasuk mean when it says, V'etein l'cha eretz chem d'nachalas tzvi? Lama eretz tzvi nimshala, lama eretz Yisrael nimshala tzvi? Why is the land of Israel compared to a deer? Lomar lach, ma tzvi zeh, ein oram machzik besaro. Just like a deer, that the skin doesn't actually properly cover the body. Rashi explains that when the skin is actually removed from the body, it shrinks a little bit. So even if you make one incision and then you try to wrap it around again, the ends won't meet. The skin instantly shrinks with the cutting because it's just been pulled so tightly. And there's like this kind of uh, tension in the skin. It just retracts a little bit. That's seemingly what the Gemara says. So, so too, af Eretz Yisrael ain't no machzek as peroses. So too, the blessing of Eretz Yisrael is that the ground, the the earth can't, eat, the the land of Eretz Yisrael can't even hold its own fruits. Davar Acher, another pshat in the pasuk, matzvi ze kal mikol achayos, just like the deer is very very light on its feet. That's part one. Let's see if part two clicks because it's a bit of a strange uh, comparison. Af Eretz Yisrael kal mikol ha arotzos levashel as peroses. So too, Israel, the fruits ripen the quickest. Okay, that's all those. I'm not being mean, but it sounds like a schwer comparison of the tzvi to the Eretz Yisrael of saying like, yes, they're light on their feet. The fruits ripen the quickest. It's, just, it's based on the word kal. The kal, okay. Imatzvi says the Gemara, is that kal ve'in besaro shamin? Hold on one second. This animal, the tzvi, venison, the meat is very lean. These animals are very lean. You don't see uh, obese deer running around. That's just not a thing. This says the Gemara, Af Eretz Yisrael, maybe we should say, Kalalavashel, you're right, it's quick to ripen, but Vein Peroses Shmenim, but they're not juicy, they're not fatty, they're not they're not delicious. Talmud Lomar, not, not correct. Zavas Chalav Udvash, Shmenim Echalav Umasukim Midvash. They are Shmenim Echalav, they're fatting, fatty with milk, and they're sweet like honey. Rabbi Lazar Kiyavi Salak Eretz Yisrael, when he would go up to Eretz Yisrael, Amar, Paltili Michada, when he moved up to Eretz Yisrael, he says, I've been saved from one crisis, <laughs> from, one, from one terrible thing. Kisamchu, when they gave him smicha, Omar Palti Limitarte have been saved from two crises. Ki Osvu Besod Ha'ibor. Rabbiitz, we gotta tell and talk about your story later. The Gemara says when he was put on the panel of Rabbonim, who were to do the math and to do the decisions of when we would have uh, an Ibrior, which again we know nowadays is calculated for us. But in the era when we didn't know what to do, there were definitely years that Pesach fell out on the wrong day. <laughs> definitely, for sure. I mean, we did what the Chachamim told us to do. That was our, that was our job. Now we have the lunar year down to near perfect. I mean, it's uh, even the decimal points in the Gemara that we saw many, many blot ago was a brachos, I think. The Gemara there, which gives us 29 days and a half of a day, all the, it's mamish a couple, it's like numerous decimal points uh, of accuracy better than the Gregorian calendar, which is our American calendar. We're off by way more than the Jewish calendar. So anyways, when he was put on the panel for Sota Ibor, Amar Palatili Mitzlas, why was he saved from a bunch of things? Shana Amar, the Pasuk reads, and I'm going to read it on the side because the things that we're discussing are actually not found in the quotation in the Gemara. The Pasuk reads, mm -hmm. I will see in a minute. You won't be a part of it. You won't be brought into the land. That's what the Gemara says. Besodami, five, six lines from the bottom. Besodami, lo yihu, when that part of the Pasuk is talking, that's Sod ha'ibor. That's uh, one thing that we won't get. But if I got it, I've already been saved from one from one bad thing. That's referring to smicha, and he just got his smicha. This smicha. That you won't make it to Israel. So when he checked off those three boxes, he knew that he made it. He knew that he had, it was a success. Rebzeira Kavisalak Laerts Yisrael. This is where we started all the Eretz Yisrael Gemaras was with Rebzeira. Remember Rebzeira Behuda, they didn't agree. All the Drushas, Sat Merebah, is it Mutter to make Aliyah? Only Kechoma is it Asr? Is it even Asr as an individual? That's uh, Pashas of the Gemara, according to Rebbehuda, that he held it as Asr to make Aliyah even as an individual. So the Gemara says over here, Rebzeira Kavisalak Laerts Yisrael, he actually did make Aliyah. But Lo Ashkach Mavr Le Mavar, he couldn't find a bridge to cross. What he did find was a rope. So Nukad b'metzra v'ka'avar. He saw a rope over the water. So he grabbed the rope. He saw it was connected on the other side. And he waded through the waters by using the rope to keep him from going downstream. So says the Gemara, I'm a paziza. You're so, you're so rash. You're so crazy. What are you, what's wrong with you? You put your mouth before your ears. This is actually a backhanded insult that the Yidin said, Nasev and Nishma. You put, 
it's also speaking specifically says the Maktim the Maktim Pumaychu Lo Yeah, I think there's another Chazal song. Oh. Specifically says, it's not Makhmah. By Nasev and It makes no sense. What do you mean it makes no sense? I mean, plush it. It's it makes, makes no sense. Yeah. So that's what he's calling out. Yeah. And he says, Akati bipsizu saichu kaimisu. You're still holding on to your craziness. You're jumping in the water. Wait for them to build a bridge. What's your problem? Says the Gemara, Amar Lei, Duchta, this place of Eretz Yisrael, the Moshe, Aaron lo zachula, that Moshe and Aaron were not zochet to go into. They had to die and they were not allowed to go in. Ona mi emar de zakinula. Who am I to think that I'm any better? If I have a chance to go, I'm going. Because Moshe wasn't allowed to go in. The, the Meforshim were asked on this Gemara, but Moshe and Aaron had a Gzera from a Kodesh Baruch Hu that they couldn't go. You're a regular, please excuse me, and I'm not minimizing, but you're you're an Amora. You're not Moshe Rabbeinu. You're great. But why would you assume that you had a Gzera against you like the greats of Moshe Aaron? So there's uh, discussions in the Meforshim. Famous Gemara on the very, very last line of Kufiyot Beza Manalit. Rabbi Abba Menashe Kipe de Akko. He would kiss the stones of Akko. Rabbi Chanina Misakein Maskele. Rashi, last line, Misakein Maskele, he would fix things. Mashve u Misakein Michshole Ha'ir, Mach Maschibas Ha'oretz. Whenever he saw a hole in the ground, he would fill it up. He saw a bump, he would flatten it out because he loved Eretz Yisrael so much. Back in the Gemara, Ravami Viravasi, final turn of the page for the Masechta. Kaime Mishimsha Latula, they would go from the sun to the shade, Umitula Lashimsha, and from the shade to the sun. This basically is something that we pine for for our children, which is they don't complain. If you're hot, great, go solve the problem and go somewhere cold. Are you cold? Great, go put on a sweatshirt. But we're not changing the air conditioning here. So the Gemara is highlighting here that they weren't complaining. They were satisfied with their life. It's hot in a Hanami. Fine, we'll go in the shade. The Gemara was just highlighting that their love for they, they didn't want to they didn't want to let anything ooze out by accident, anything negative about it. It's just nothing. They wanted everything to be in the positive. Uh, so That's what he says. <laughs> the Ferus. If you have the Ecobi. Nest. Rebchia <laughs> Bargamda, Mingadar Ba'afra. Could you imagine seeing this scene? Seeing a Godol Batora literally rolling in the dirt of Eretz Yisrael. Much as if a child does it, we would be like, okay, they're a kid. But if you see a gadol rolling in the dirt, you'd cry. There's, it's beautiful. It's, it's an, um, I mean, it's strange, but it's when you're in love, you do crazy things. When you really love Eretz Yisrael, that's what it is. The generation in which uh, Ben David, that's Mashiach, will come. Kategoria It's going to be a time where the Talmud Chachamim are criticized regularly. They're persecuted. It will be a burning after a burning. Tzeruf in this case doesn't, it means burning, but it means like refining of metal. If there's impurities in the metal, so you do a burn, you get rid of some of them. And there's going to be multiple levels of this, um, which would be, again, category. Okay, there's still 10% less. We're going to burn it out still. So again, the same reference to the Chachamim that are going to be challenged. Tony Reb Yosef, Bazuzi u Bazuzi de Bazuzi. There's going to be uh, plundering and plundering of the plundering. Uh, all, all part of the same uh, same idea. Rashi says the translation of the word Sholem lemachar Sholem. There's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of spoils that are going to be stolen. Fine. The Gemara does end on a positive note, though, just so that uh, we try not to end before Anus. The Gemara ends the Masechta with the following line: Amar of Chiyabar Ashi, Amar Av. We saw a piece of this Gemara earlier. All of the Ilane Srak, all of the trees that are not fruit bearing, are going to be bearing fruit. Their wealth will be on these trees. Mazel Tov on finishing the 15th Masechet of Shas. Here's Hashem tomorrow. We'll start a new Masechet. Anyone want to do the same? Any takers? The sponsor does the same. Pass on to me. Thank you very much. I'm not paying for the same. You're paying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing the same. I'm not. Uh, I'm on a budget. I'm on a budget. Hadron Allah Maseches Maseches Ksubas Vahadra Chalan. Daitan Allah Maseches Ksubas Vahadra Chalan. 
Lo nisna shem inoch maseches ksuvos, lo sisna shem inon, lo baalma hadain, lo baalma daasi. Hadran alach maseches ksuvos ve hadra chalan. Daitan alach maseches ksuvos ve daita chalan. Lo nisna shem inoch maseches ksuvos, lo sisna shem inon, lo baalma hadain, lo baalma daasi. Hadran alach maseches ksuvos ve hadra chalan. Daitan alach maseches ksuvos ve daita chalan. Lo nisna shem inoch maseches ksuvos, lo sisna shem inon, lo baalma hadain, lo baalma daasi. me o yavai secha kimeni mitzvah secha ki le olam hili. Hili bi samim bechukecha leman lo evosh. Le olam lo eshkach pikudecha ki vam chisoni. Baruch ata adonoi la medeni chukecha. Amen, amen, amen. Sela voed. Bodim anachnu lefanecha adonoi lohenu velohe avosenu. She samta chalkenu miyoshwe ve samedrash. Velo samta chalkenu miyoshwe kronos. She anu mashkimim vehem mashkimim. Anu mashkimim ladiv reisora. Vehem mashkimim ladvarim betelim. Anu amelim vehem amelim. Anu amelim u makablim sachar, vehem amelim vehem makablim sachar. Anu ratzim vehem ratzim. Anu ratzim lechai olam abba, vehem ratzim lever shachas. Shinamar batalim toridim lever shachas, anshe damim u mirma, lo yechetu yemeim vani of tachbach. Yiratzon mi lefanecha adunai lohai, kishem shazartani lesay maseches ksubos, kain taazreni lahaschel masechtos u svarim acherim u lesayma, lilmod u lelamed. Lishmor Velasos Ulakaim is called the Re Salmu Torah Secha, the Ahava, Uschus called Hatanoim, the Amoraim, the Samir Hachamim, Yamo Li, Ulizari, Shalo Samu Shator Mipi, Umipizari, the Zerazari Ad Olam, the Siskaim B, the Hisalecha, Tanheo Sach, the Shokhacha Tishmor, Alecha of Hakitosa, he says he hecha, Kivir Buyamecha, the Yosifa Lachno Schaim, or a Yemen Bimina, the Smoda Osha, the Havod, Adonai Ozla, Moitain, Adonai Varech, and Samova Shalom. Kadal <laughs> Bagalovisman <laughs> Yeah, hey, Lando, the whole Israel, 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 Israel,